Okay, so I did a previous video about the Galaxy DX86V and its attributes out of the box. And the standard uh, modification, I did that first and checked it out and it did what, uh, what it's supposed to do there. But uh, then I changed things around a little bit and I'll show you the end result and then I'll show you what I did and how I achieved it. So, as you can see, it's doing something that uh, it supposedly is not able to do. The modification doesn't give you this, the, you know, standard published modification. And it certainly doesn't do it out of the box. So. We've got the. Uh, the course clarifier is a slider. It moves both transmit and receive. That's out of the box. Okay, so it goes as low as. 28.31 and that's just just above the, that's 10 kilocycles above the uh, the bottom of the single sideband subband on 10 meters so right there that makes it usable for any US ham because that's where most of the uh, single sideband activity is and it's the only phone privilege that a, a technician license, licensee has. So it goes 28310 to 28760. So, and I've got it on the upper sideband right now. Okay, and that is in the, the D, the center position on the band set. It's a three position switch. So I didn't change the switch out or anything like that. So we'll go down to the lower position. Okay. Channel 40. 27405. 26965 Oh huh. So we've got some Spanish speaking activity coming in on channel 9. Interesting. Okay. Twenty-seven one eight five. So I've got it set so in the lower position. You got the 40 channels of C B. All right, center position, we've got the single sideband subband of 10 meters. And the upper position, we've got, this is the way it is out of the box. And out of the box, this switch is non-functional. And it's just set on this frequency set. So it goes from 28765 to 29205. So that basically is the AM subband of 10 meters. 
so that makes it very useful. You got CB, 10 meter sideband, and 10 meter AM. Now let's look at how I did that. By the way, I want to point out too that uh, this has the same 4 pin mic connector and the same wiring as a standard uh, Cobra microphone. So anything that works, anything that's sold to work with the Cobra will work with this. Such as this A Static, oh, uh, what is it, 636L. Good microphone. So I looked at a couple of different modifications for the DX86V and none of them applied to my radio. Including one that I saw on YouTube. The one that I saw on YouTube showed removing the top cover and taking out a wire loop. Well that wire loop, not only does that wire loop not exist in this radio, but the main board looks to be different. The traces aren't even the same. But uh, here's the thing, if you pull off the bottom cover, which is the one with the speaker, there is, here's the band board. This is the front of the radio, so it's it's about halfway back, a little less than halfway back. Okay. And I took the number off that board and looked it up. And what I found was some older Galaxy radios that use that same board. And one of them specifically was the DX44. And uh, so this connector that you see was unplugged. So that caught my attention right away. And uh, this board is secured by one screw and I removed that screw, flipped it over and looked at the bottom and I saw that there was a solder bridge between two of the pins. And so I started wondering about that too. And looking at the uh, modification for the DX44 which I think 2006 might have been the last year that was produced. But uh, anyway, this is the same thing. Because it mentioned uh, a solder bridge and it said you've got to desolder that solder bridge. Make sure the pins are still, con still soldered correctly but is no long are no longer bridged. And then you plug in the connector to that... Uh, that jack which is J3. So I did that and uh, that did open it up for 11 meters and it gave the, the three position switch uh, which is CDE it gave D for CB band, C for the lowers and E for the uppers. And so I did a little bit of experimenting and a little research and so on and I found that and this is actually marked the where the the pin that the brown wire goes to is marked as plus 8 volts so that's regulated 8 volts DC and uh, the one next to it the one on the very end is a black wire and it says plus 10 K so that would be the wire that if this ha if, it, if it were uh, a DX44 or uh, a DX99 or any number of other radios, that black wire would go to the plus 10k switch to uh, to step it up 10 kilocycles. And what I found, and and the rest of these uh, the rest of these pins are for band segments and they're even listed. They are uh, silk screened onto the board so they say H, G and so on all the way down to 
B, which is not actually connected to the the header, and there's nothing going to it, but the bottom position is C. So that uh, equates to the different uh, different band segments that are available. So what I discovered was that the that brown wire that plus eight volts regulated is the key and the brown wire actually takes the eight volts to the bandset switch three position bandset switch so with this connector unplugged and a solder blob between the the plus eight volts pin and the pin next to it which is the H channel pin that's what gave it the uh, 28.765 to 29.205 bandset and uh, that happens to be where the uh, the AM subband is located so that's a good thing if that's not all you have you know but with this being unplugged that took the switch completely out of the circuit so it just it was just jumpered to H and that was the only band set it had okay so removing that solder bridge and plugging this in the uh, yellow orange and red wires were C D E and uh, so those selected the uh, in the middle D that was the CB frequencies CB channels yellow was the lowers and red was the uppers so all I did and it had uh, it had three empty slots in between and so all I did was uh, I use these fine tweezers to pop the pins out of that connector and just moved them around and I moved them to to activate different band segments to get what I wanted so the plus 8 volts jumper to whichever pan, whichever band pin you want activates that band and also the plus 8 volts jumpered to the plus 10 kilocycle gives you plus 10 kilocycles so what I've seen done is a couple of wires run from that to a switch in the rear panel added to it you know and uh, so that you've got a little toggle switch or push button switch for to add the 10 kilocycles on the back I haven't done that but I I might do it I don't know if I if I start feeling like I need the the plus 10 kilocycles I'll do that it won't be any problem it'll just be a matter of uh, either go under the board and solder a couple of wires to the those terminals or even just uh, tap off of the wires itself but anyway this is what I did and that's how it works it's just the plus 8 volts jumper to whatever band you want and also jumper to the the plus 10 if you want that feature and that's how you get the bands that you want and uh, as you saw it works great and I decided that the 40 standard CB channels, 40 channels in the uh, the 10 meter single sideband subband, and 40 channels in the the 10 meter AM subband plus upper part of the single sideband subband outside of uh, of the technician privileges. So it does pretty much everything I can do with AM and single sideband on 10 meters. 
and that was what I was hoping for. There you go. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps.